Um, I have deep roots in this community, and for many, many years growing up, we would come up on Memorial Day and enjoy the beautiful uh, community, the beautiful um, area, and enjoy association with wonderful relatives. As I uh, think about Utah State, uh, I, uh, I have fond feelings for this wonderful institution. I don't know of a campus any place in America that is more beautiful, where you have finer professors and a finer educational program. And I just commend you for making such a great decision to be here in this beautiful area. Uh, I don't know how many uh, parts of the country or the world that you might be from, but uh, uh, you can learn a lot from the great work ethic of people in this area. I uh, would like to uh, talk for a few minutes today with you about principles that I've learned that have helped me in business. You have a, uh, a very nice uh, introduction from Dean Anderson. Uh, I've had a wonderful association over many years with the Huntsman family, and I'll tell you a couple of wonderful stories about them and how they've changed my life. And uh, uh, whether you uh, uh, are thinking that business is going to be the, uh, the area that you would like to pursue in life, for a few minutes let's talk about a, a few principles. And it's my hope that you can leave today uh, learning some things that will help you on your road to success. Uh, you, I understand, are some of the senior students here at Utah State in the College of Business, juniors and seniors. And uh, let me just see a show of hands how many uh, have always, since they grew up, uh, have always wanted to uh, go into business or to pursue a business field. And how many have just recently decided to do that? Probably the majority. So during the course of your college experience, have you been studying other kinds of things here at the university? Well, uh, there may be some of you that are still skeptical here that uh, don't know what you might want to do or where you may want to go. Thank you. Okay. And some of you may be skeptical about um, the world of business, but hopefully by the end of this hour that we spend together, you can take away a few things that will make a difference in your life. Um, every single day that you get up and that you uh, go to work or go to school or go to, to do things that you're involved in, uh, you're molded and shaped by the experiences that you have. This week, just a couple of days ago, um, my father-in-law, Dale Barton, passed away a great icon in the industry in which I work, a great mentor, uh, someone that I've looked up to, someone that's really truly made a difference in my life. And um, while you're here in this setting, I don't know how much time the National Advisory Board has to meet with you, but there's an old Chinese proverb that goes like this. Time spent across the table with a wise person is worth a month's a month study in books. And that's truly the case. These individuals are some of the most successful that we'll ever meet in our lifetime. Those that have really paid the price to make a difference in what they have chosen to do. And therefore, if you have an opportunity to shake their hand and to meet them, it'll truly make a huge difference. The first principle I'd like to share with you that's made a huge difference in my life is that of integrity. And uh, if you were to, to put down maybe a topic for my message today, it would be that which we keep is what we give away. And there's a lot of significant meaning in that. That which we keep is that which we give away. As we think about integrity, is your word your bond? What kind of a name do you have? What is your reputation? Well, from as long as I can remember, those people that I really held in self-esteem, such as my grandfather or my father, my father-in-law, John Huntsman, and many others, 
uh, I tried to learn what they were all about and why a reputation was so important. I learned that uh, your name is everything and that as you leave this life, as I saw my father-in-law put in the casket, as the, door, as the lid was closed and he, as he was buried, there weren't any things in his pocket. But what he gave away is what he kept, and that was his name and his integrity. His word was always his bond. You've learned that I'm in the uh, insurance and surety bonding business. We act as a silent bank. We stand behind a customer that guarantees performance and payment to an owner. In the event they cannot perform, we have to step in and perform and, and uh, pick up the pieces. So integrity, character is extremely important. Character can be defined as who we are or what we are when nobody else is around. And that's extremely important. I don't know if you've gone through this exercise in your life up to this point in time, but if you can make the decision one time that you want to be a man or woman of integrity, it will make all the difference. In fact, that will be the thing that will carry with you throughout your life. Fortunately, I look like my grandfather, and after he passed away, I would be out in the community at a wedding reception or at a funeral or another event, and somebody would come up to me and stick out their hand, their hand and say, I know you, you are Sam Clark. And they had never met me before, but they knew my grandfather, and they knew what kind of an individual that he was. And um, all of these individuals I've mentioned have, uh, have made a difference, that it takes 30 years to build a reputation, and you can lose that reputation in 30 seconds. It's extremely important. Um, so integrity is, is, is very important, and it's, it's one of the things that, um, that I would like to suggest that each one of us think about. As, as I come to a convocation like this, or any of your professors or others, what we're trying to do is not only give back, but pay forward for your lives to try to make a difference so that as you go out into this world, you can be people that truly will make a difference and be able to serve other people. Success is, is not a destination, and I want to emphasize that. It's, it's a journey, and it's something that we work on and add to each and every day. A few years ago, my grandfather, on a handshake, sold a fairly large piece of property in this state to some developers. He was paid part of the money, but not paid all of the money. But throughout his life, he always had integrity. He had made a contract by his handshake that he would sell that piece of property. Now, some of his friends and others came to him and said, well, you know, you weren't very smart not to get that in writing. And he said, my word is my bond. And what was interesting is we went through life, some of those people that were on the purchasing side couldn't really look anybody in the family in the eye because they knew what they had done. They knew what they had agreed to, but yet they didn't stand behind it. So the important thing is we need to worry about ourselves and our own integrity and how important that is in our own lives. I, um, at an early age, I had heard a story told by my father about a pencil lying on the floor and somebody coming along, one of his friends, and uh, thinking that he would pick up that pencil. And yet this thought came into his mind, will I be a thief for a pencil? Now, that's a very minor thing, but uh, as you think about the work that you do, you may work on campus, you may work off campus, you may uh, do a number of different things. You're, you're certainly taking a lot of different kinds of classes. And in those classes, it's extremely important that you um, complete your assignments with integrity, that you do your projects with integrity. Um, what was interesting, kind of a, fla uh, a flash to the, the past, uh, when I was uh, uh, in my senior year, I did a special project, a term project. And I had the opportunity to go down and to work with a business and to come up with a business plan and some principles of business that were really important. And I happened to keep one of those copies, and it wasn't uh, 
I, it was sometime this past year, I walked into one of these stores uh, down in the Salt Lake area. This happened to be a company called Wallpaper Warehouse, just to give you an example. Some of you may have seen that. Relatively uh, small company, but with a lot of distribution sites. As I met with Teach and Charlie, who are the owners, we talked about integrity as being an important principle. And what was interesting is as I walked into their office, not that this, this booklet or this project was anything special, but they had right on the corner of their desk, looked like drinks had been spilled on it, and it was quite tattered. But here they still had this that we had given them years ago as a senior term project at the university. So the things that you do do, do have a place and merit. Let me tell you one other story about integrity. We had two customers, two long-term customers. One came into our office and said, we happen to know that this other customer is doing some high-level government security work, and we, we would like you to give us the contact information so that we can hopefully also work with that particular owner. Well, we said, if you want to get that information, the best thing that you could do would be to go and talk with that customer directly. Well, at that, they, they got uh, uh, upset. They stormed out of the office and said, well, if that's the way you're going to be, we'll go work with somebody else. The interesting thing was, two years later, they walked back into our office and they said, remember that conversation and that experience we had two years ago that wasn't very pleasant? Well, now we have some opportunities and we have some confidential information, we'd like to work with you on it. It was because of standing by our principles of integrity that we were able to go forward and, and again pick up a, a customer that we had here for worked with. Uh, that's extremely important. The second principle I'd like to talk about is the attitude of customer service. Uh, how many of you have had jobs or uh, want to be in a job where customer service is important? Okay, very important. What, uh, what do we think about when we think about a customer? Is, is customer? is the customer important? Is the customer king? Do we try to do everything we can to make a difference with that customer? What happens if we don't do that? They don't come back, do they? Well. Customer service is one of the hallmarks of our business because what we try to do is bring to that customer something that uh, they don't have. And the more we can bring more to them that we have that they don't have, they want to spend time with us. They want to associate with us. They want to use our expertise. And with that, we have the opportunity to serve them in, in a cu customer service role. Um, as you have an attitude of service, uh, it's easier to work in whatever you might do. Um, and if you, if you learned the importance of dressing for success, if you were to go to work for Apple Computer, for example, you would uh, dress very casually, uh, you would have ping pong tables that you could play on, and uh, so forth. If in years gone by, if you were to go to work for IBM, for example, uh, you would wear a blue suit. If you work for Safeco Insurance Company of America, you would wear a white shirt. You, you want to find out um, what is important to that customer and, uh, and um, act and dress accordingly. I'd like to tell you a story about a customer where going the extra mile really made the difference. Um, as was mentioned, we have an opportunity to work with a number of fine long-term customers in this community. Uh, some have been uh, with our office for 30, 35, 40, 45 years. This year we celebrate our 60th year of being in business. And um, it, it is a result of, I believe in part, to that extra mile customer service that we always want to think about. We're never as good as what we've just completed for a customer. We had a customer that we had sent a, um, a bond to, and in our business, we use bonding instruments that guarantee performance and payment. We had sent overnight, with adequate preparations, to Idaho a bid bond for a very large electrical project. And uh, that morning early, I got a call from the president of the company who informed me that for some reason 
the courier that was bringing the federal or the um, overnight package uh, had not uh, delivered it. And they were in a panic because they had spent uh, over a couple of weeks putting together a very important bid and uh, needed a bond. And so um, uh, automatically we prepared a replacement bond. We uh, got in our automobile and we drove to Idaho as fast as we could, obeying the, the traffic rules to be able to get, of course, driving uh, uh, the speed limit. But fortunately, we were able to get there to the location of the bid uh, letting, deliver the bond to our customer. He walked into the bid letting. There were seven other bidders, and fortunately, they were low on this particular bid. Now, do you think that customer is still working with us? Um, they certainly are, and that, uh, among many other things, have helped us uh, have the privilege and opportunity of working with that particular account. Again, you do what it takes to make uh, your customers successful. As they're successful, you're successful as a byproduct. We had another project up at uh, Hill Air Force Base uh, involved with the F-16 uh, um, military uh, warcraft. And uh, in a project up there, sometimes on a very fast track project that has a lot of uh, um, intricate aspects to it, uh, sometimes you have a contract that is presented that is really quite burdensome. Now, we like to be an advocate for our customers in helping them to have the very best contracts possible with a given owner. Uh, as we talked with the contracting officer, they weren't willing to budge on, on uh, this particular aspect of the contract. And so we were invited to call uh, back to the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., which we did. We told them the circumstance, the situation, that they had some very fine uh, customers or some very fine bidders that were on this project and that uh, they may have resistance from the, the bidders. The next day, as the bid letting came around, uh, there wasn't one contractor that showed up for the bid letting because of this onerous condition that had not been changed. We then received a phone call that said, we get the picture, we understand the situation, may we make a change so that these these bidders can come and participate in this project. So there's a lot of fun intrigue in, in the business world in terms of what you're able to do. Uh, you really become a problem solver. You, uh, you look of ways of solving problems, of helping others to be successful, and then again, you're successful yourself. The third principle I'd like to talk about is that of passion. How many have, uh, how many have a passion for uh, what you're studying in school? Good. All of your hands ought to be up on this one as you look around and see your professors here. Um, passion is a wonderful word. And you think of the jobs that you now have or that you're doing part-time while you're going to the university. Do you really have a passion for some of those? Aren't some of those just something to kind of get you through, uh, to kind of help you get a little bit of money so that you can continue buying your books and, uh, and paying your tuition? Well, once you find something that you really enjoy doing, then you have the opportunity of having passion. And as you have passion, it's amazing the kinds of things that you, you can do. Um, as you, uh, how many, uh, how many are really excited, more so for Monday than they are for Friday? <laughs> well, that's quite a loaded question, isn't it? I think in this time of life, many of us are just grateful to get to Friday. We're looking forward to the weekend, and we're not really thinking about Monday. But as you develop a passion for something, you can really go forward and really get excited about Monday, just like you can about Friday and uh, about what you can accomplish uh, during the next uh, few days. Have all of you had an opportunity to, to study about Maslow's hierarchy of needs? You remember when you get to the apex uh, or the top where it talks about self-actualization? Well, when you get to that point, when you have passion and you get to self-actualization, 
there's really no differentiation between work and play. So I, I'm enjoying as much working as I am playing because of the passion that I've developed for the things that I enjoy doing. It was mentioned that, um, that I, I, I wear a number of different hats. I, I believe I'm the same person, but as I go from one thing to another, I just change a hat. Whether I'm, I'm working as president of our company, serving on a number of boards, or serving in an ecclesiastical position, whatever your religious persuasion is, whether you go to a, mo a mosque or a synagogue or a church, uh, it's important to be excited about what you're doing, to uh, really make every minute count, to, uh, to get excited about uh, the things that you'll see in the future. How many of you at this point have gone through a um, kind of a job interview process or kind of sorting out where you may want to go? Have you looked at some companies you possibly may want to look at? Have you looked at some, uh, uh, some businesses you may want to explore or do some research on? Some of you done that at this point? Well, eventually what you do is you put everything on the table and you kind of sort out and you see if it fits. And sometimes during our college career, we may change our major three times or more. And eventually, hopefully all of you that are here today in this college of business setting will want to make business part of your life because I can tell you that it's the most exciting thing I've ever been involved in. A number of years ago, I thought I really liked the sciences. At one time, <coughs> excuse me, in college, I was majoring in math and physics. It's kind of hard to believe maybe. But um, I'm grateful, very grateful that I made that, that turnaround and that I've been able to pursue business. And uh, it becomes a lifelong process. Learning and continuing education is extremely important. Um, and so I would just submit to you that whatever you can do, whatever you can learn from someone else, will pay you tremendous dividends as you go forward in, in your life. I've done a number of things in my life, and it was mentioned that I, I started out in this business as a file clerk. Well, that's extremely important as you start from the ground floor up to really realize the integral parts of a business, to see what makes it click, see what makes it work. And as you understand where things are and the order of things, as you learn how to make uh, uh, do different things, um, it, it really serves you well as you go forward. In my earlier life, our family was in the farming business. We raised watermelons in Pahrump, Nevada, raised cotton in Arizona, we uh, raised grain in, in Utah. And I can tell you that being in the farming business uh, is extremely difficult work. You work from sunrise to sundown, you, uh, you go to bed tired, uh, and uh, it, uh, it really teaches you a lot about the importance of work. Um, and, you know, whatever you do, uh, each one of these experiences will really be extremely important for you as, as you go forward. Um, just rubbing shoulders with these wonderful advisory board members in this room, they represent uh, a broad spectrum of our uh, society and economy. Uh, they do a number of very interesting and exciting things. And, um, and as you talk to them, uh, you can really tell that they have passion for what they do. They're the very best in, in everything that they undertake to accomplish. I'd like to talk for just a minute about um, uh, my uh, father-in-law and then a little bit about John Huntsman, Sr., my father-in-law grew up as a very poor individual. He has roots in, uh, in Cache Valley. And it was nice sitting uh, next to uh, Ken in our uh, prior meeting, uh, just reminiscing a little bit about his wonderful relatives, the Ericsons and the Brobergs in this area. Uh, he learned, uh, because he really didn't have anything, he uh, he had to sacrifice his entire life to get to where he was at. Um, he was willing to do any kind of thing to, uh, to earn a little bit of money so that he could go to college. Um, when he uh, um, uh, qualified for graduate school, he hadn't had all of the uh, 
acceptances received, and so he took off for Wisconsin, and then in the meantime, got his acceptance from Columbia University, and uh, didn't even know where Columbia was, and as he went back there, he had no housing, he had no, uh, no place to, to uh, work or live, and uh, little by little, he was able to um, fend for himself and learn what it took to, uh, to be successful. Uh, one of the things that he's always valued and one thing that he's always uh, instilled in myself, our family, our children, and so many around is that he has always valued the importance of books. And he's seen that as we get familiar and enjoy books in our life, becoming voracious readers and whatever topic or subject that we might have, that that can be extremely important for us, that it can really help and shape uh, our thinking, our careers, and uh, everything that we might want to accomplish. So I'm most grateful for him, for what uh, he represented in, in my life and in the life of so many people. Um, we had people from all over the country that had interfaced with him in one uh, facet or another at the funeral, and it was really a great example to me as to how, again, you want to employ those principles of integrity, those principles of customer service, and developing a passion. Um, I've been privileged to know uh, John M. Huntsman Sr. for many, many years, and I've seen him um, serve people every single day. Uh, he's, some of you may have had an opportunity to meet him, and some of you may not have, but every time I have an opportunity to, to meet him, he'll stick out his hand, give me a firm handshake, put his hand on my shoulder, and say, Sam, how are you doing? How's your family doing? How's everything going in your business? He's interested in people. He, uh, he truly uh, represents the, the pinnacle of integrity, of customer service, and of passion in his life. I remember knowing of a young man who was really having some challenges. And he called him up on the telephone and said, I would like to uh, meet you out at the airport. Do you have the evening and tomorrow free? I'd like to meet you at the airport. And uh, he met this young man took him down to California to, say, to see Les Miserables. And it truly changed this young man's life. It made all the difference. Again, um, this is the kind of caring, thoughtful individual. And to now be part of the John M. Huntsman College of Business is, is truly a thrill. I uh, had mentioned to uh, David Huntsman and to the dean, I don't know if all of you would have a copy of his book that he wrote called Winners Never Cheat. But if some of you don't have this book, I'd like you to give the dean uh, your name, and I'd like to provide one of these books to you because this is extremely important. Uh, just a very uh, easy, quick read about everyday values that we learned as children but may have forgotten. Tremendous book. I'd commend that to you. It may be on your reading list, but extremely important. I'd like to provide that to you as I think about my father-in-law and his importance on books and uh, John M. Huntsman's message to each of us on that particular subject. I think it's important that, uh, again, as I mentioned in, my, in the, the message today, that we keep that which we give away. It doesn't really matter what we make in this life, but we need to, uh, to give back. We need to make a difference. We need to serve others. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, it is one of the most beautiful, um, uh, one of the most beautiful things of this life that uh, as we give to another, we will definitely uh, help ourselves. And, uh, and that is true. Whatever we give, we get back many fold in, uh, in our lives. And again, it doesn't really matter what we do in life, but we've got to develop a passion for it. I would like to... Um, for just a minute, before I open it up to some question and answers, just relate a story that was told by a friend and uh, national motivational speaker by the name of Zig Ziglar. He told the story of two individuals that went to school together. They graduated at the same time. They both went to work for the same company. And 40 years later, the one individual was president of that company, and the other individual was still working for a job at $5.80 an hour. What do you think made the difference? Um, the 
the one person who became the president went to work for the railroad and the other one just went forward and got a job. So you see that it's important that whatever our jobs are, that if it's something we enjoy, that it becomes a career. That we just don't look at the clock from 8 to 5 and decide that's what we want to do, but that we sacrifice whatever it takes to make that difference. That we, we learn whatever we need to learn. We uh, serve however we need to serve, and that we uh, help one another. As we help other people, we certainly are helping ourselves along the way. Um, I appreciate the opportunity of uh, being here, of being able to uh, um, just share a few thoughts with you. These have certainly become part of my life. They've made a difference. I'm excited every day, and uh, even though that some days are very, very long, the different hats I wear, I value uh, those things that I've learned and those principles on which I've governed my life to try to be successful so that I can give back, so that I can make a difference with those around me. I appreciate your attention this morning. I'm so impressed with your wonderful business building, the things that have taken place, the wonderful things that are yet to take place. The future is very bright. Uh, as I look around this, uh, this auditorium today, uh, I'm very impressed with, uh, with each of you and the great individuals that you are and the difference that you'll make in our community, our nation, and, and the world as, as, the, as time goes on. I thank you very much for your attention. Yes, yes we did. Case, yes. Can you say a little bit more about that project and yes. why that was meaningful to you yes. and to them? Yes, exactly. Um, as a student, you hear about these companies out in the community, and you don't know much about them, but you're asked by your professor to go out and to, um, uh, you're given the name of the company because apparently they had contacted the College of Business and said that they had a need. They enjoyed what they were doing, but they needed a lot of things to help them uh, go forward. And so... Uh, we had an opportunity to go and uh, sit down with the owners to review what they had done, how long they had been in business, where they felt that their strengths and their weaknesses were, and what could be done to help them further their business. Um, and as we did that, we put together a booklet that was about probably three quarters of an inch thick. It was bound with a little binder. And... Uh, and we presented that to them, and then we went through it section by section. Um, I should have thought to bring one and just show you today, not to necessarily say that we did anything wonderful, but what's exciting is you, is you have the opportunity to do something like this and then to see that it still has a carry forward results as you go into the future. So that was really quite a rewarding experience. How long had they been using that, uh, that report that you, you well, prepared? That was in the mid-70s, and they, just as of a year ago, they still had it on their desk. Now, it had a little bit of dust on it, and it had, again, some, uh, some liquid spills on it, but uh, they indicated that they, they still had it, and they were still using it, still subscribing to the principles of it. Pretty amazing. Let's open it up for some questions. Yes. When you're a math and physics student, what kind of things uh, touch you and inspired you? Well, uh, communication is so important. Uh, the words that we use uh, mean everything. And again, this isn't a knock to the, the Department of Mathematics, more so than the Department of Physics, but I'll, I'll mention two things. One, um, as, as I was taking very difficult classes in, in math and calculus and so forth, uh, you had some very fine, bright graduate students, but it was difficult for them to communicate to the students. 
And I wasn't the only student that was sharing those same kinds of feelings. So again, it didn't have the spark, it didn't have the enthusiasm that, uh, that I, I wanted and felt could be there. In physics, I've always enjoyed physics, um, but along the, the road of life, I met some business people that really uh, captured my interest, uh, captured my enthusiasm, and, and therefore that helped me kind of gravitate over to the College of Business. And I'm, I'll be forever grateful that I made that decision. One of those was, was <clears throat> your father-in-law, Dale Parker. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Tell us a little bit about that, uh, Sam. How, uh, how did you first meet uh, uh, Dale and uh, you know, your wife Liz, and how did that, what was it like working for your father-in-law, and, and, and what were both some of the challenges and opportunities that came out of that? Right, I, that's a very good question. Um, I grew up in a family where my father had been uh, involved in organizing a domiciled life insurance company in the state of Utah, and he was involved in some other businesses, so I enjoyed that part of the insurance business, but as I went to the university, and I took all the business classes I could in insurance and risk management and those kinds of things, I really thought, boy, this is an area that I'm really excited about. And then I had an opportunity to, uh, to meet my wife through some uh, mutual friends that uh, were attending the university from Chicago. And um, we, uh, we dated, and uh, then I met her father, and I, I wish all of you could have had an opportunity to, to meet him. He was a very hard-nosed, dogmatic, uh, wonderful, high-integrity individual, but boy, you, there was no nonsense about what you did. And um, I mean, it was very difficult. Uh, he would call me up on any day of the week at 5.30 or 6 o'clock in the morning just to see if I was up and going and if I was making good use of my time that day. <laughs> uh, I kid you not. And. Um, and I mean, I mean, he was really, really hard on me, but I, I'm grateful for what I learned. And um, after I dated my wife for a while, I thought, boy, here's a nice person I'd like to marry. So I, I made an appointment, and I went into him, and I said, um, Mr. Barton, um, I've been dating your daughter, as you probably are aware, and I'd, <laughs> I'd, I'd like to marry her. And he quipped right back. He said, he said young man, what makes you think you can take care of my daughter? And by the way, how much education do you have? As I told him, I already had a couple of degrees uh, in business and so forth. He says, I don't think that's enough. You need to go back and get a degree in accounting. I said, okay, if that's what it takes, that's what I'll do. So I went back and got the degree in accounting, and I came back to him. <laughs> you know, I kind of crawl in there just uh, um, very carefully, and um, I, I, uh, at that point, I was, I was excited, and I said, uh, Mr. Barton, remember that conversation we had? I said, I've gone back and I've gotten a degree in accounting. I'd really like to marry your daughter. And he looked at me square in the eye and he said, okay, you passed the test. <laughs> and, uh, and so that began a very nice, wonderful relationship. And um, what was interesting is there's a number of people in the family, but at the end of his life, I was probably clo as close or closer to him than any of the other siblings of my wife. And um, I attributed that to the fact that I learned how to work extremely hard, many, many long hours, but developed a great love for this great man. And I'll, uh, I'll miss him a lot, but I can, I can uh, <clears throat> hear in his mind, um, you know, the things that he was saying and telling me. I'll tell you kind of a funny story, just to kind of give you a little bit about his personality. He always said that he had all the tact in the world because he never used any. <laughs> and, um, and we had an employee in our office that was in a store checking out at a check, check line, and the, uh, the, the, the salesperson there said to our employee, if you want to have a traumatic experience, just wait on that man over there, pointing to Mr. Barton. And to which the employee said, if you want to have an, a, a traumatic experience, just work for him. So, um, uh, it, and, and, I, and I think that uh, I, I probably wouldn't be the person I, I am today, uh, Dean, without that wonderful uh, hard experience. But, boy, it sure helped me determine right away whether I like this business or not, because it, it's tough. And let me just tell you one experience that we had, again, that goes back to passion. Sometimes you don't need to be bashful for doing the right thing. 
We had two specialty contractors that were needed on a very large project down in Las Vegas. And this project owner is one of the most powerful individuals in Las Vegas. In fact, he's building some of the largest projects down there currently. Well, at this particular time, we had these two small specialty contractors and uh, we told them that we were very concerned about them working on this project, that it could be, uh, 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 you know, it could be a very dangerous project to work on from, uh, from a financial standpoint. And I guess word got back to the owner, and we received a phone call from this individual. And he said, I am so-and-so. Let me tell you how big I am. I employ 20,000 people in the state of Nevada. I own this airline. I own all these hotels and casinos. And uh, uh, this is my position. And after he talked, then we said back to him, Mr. So-and-so, let me just tell you how small these specialty contractors are that you need on this project. We know you don't have any other contractors that can do this particular work, and these people can do an excellent job. But if they ever ran into a financial problem with you in Nevada, they would be crushed. There is no way that they would come out financially. And therefore, we need to escrow the money for their particular part of the, the project in a Utah bank. Well, at the end of that project, some of the largest subcontractors on that project went broke because of the hard-handedness and the, the difficult situations. Our two contractors were paid because monies were escrowed in a Utah bank. And again, sometimes you have to stand up to the, the giants in this world and do what is right for the customers that you believe in and that you, that you want to take care of. Yes. Uh, you talk about giving back personally, but as a company, what can a, what can a company do or what is a responsibility to give back to the community? Well, I think that, that so many of those that have had a time with Utah State in, in different ways, and even those of us that may not have had a privilege to go to school here, we've tried to aggie up, you know, with, 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 uh, 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 with you in different and small ways. Um, I think that as you have an opportunity to be successful and to have opportunities that what you want to do is to do everything you can. And again, it's not, it's not how much you give, it's that you give and that you get in the, in the attitude of doing that. Um, I, I see the Huntsmans and what they have done to bless our, our uh, state, to bless this campus, to bless our community, to bless the country, to bless the world. And um, I, uh, I, I was in a luncheon meeting many years ago and there was a, an honored guest there, uh, Mr. Armand Hammer, who was the president of Occidental Petroleum Company that was hosted by Mr. John M. Huntsman, Sr. And the message that came out of that is that, um, that if we see needs around us and we have the ability, that we ought to try to do what we can to make a difference and to help take care of those needs. One thing I'd like us all to think about is that opportunity knocks not just once, but as many times as we're willing and able to open that door. And so therefore, I hope every day we can look for those opportunities around us and, uh, and in front of us that we might avail ourselves of doing something good and important. Let me just pick up on that point because we were talking about this at lunch today. Um, all of you know uh, about our new north end zone uh, building that's really creating a tremendous facility for our athletes. It's going to be a tremendous uh, assistance to us as we go out and uh, recruit athletes in the future to uh, uh, to help us so that we can uh, beat BYU and, and also All right. and also beat Utah. Right. Uh, but uh, uh, Tam has been very involved with a number of the businesses that have uh, have helped out in that North End Zone project. I don't know if you know this, but fully one third of the value of that building uh, has been gifted <laughs> in kind by many of the businesses that are right here in the, in the valley. And the major gift, of course, came from one of his clients, Jim Love, who's the head of Cache Valley Electric. Sam's been very involved with, with those folks, including uh, the Spindler Construction folks. Now, Spindler is the people, are the people who did this renovation in this building. Uh, and they went way out beyond uh, the call of duty and made contributions to that, uh, that building. And, when we build our new building over here, do you think we're going to look to Spindler maybe to, to take on that project? You bet we will. One of the things you can do at your stage of, of career, uh, you don't have a lot of money, we realize that, but you know what you could do? 
you take care of this building. You can help us. You know, no. if you see trash lying around, just pick it up. Um, if if you see uh, something that's broken, you know, report it to the to the uh, to the janitorial staff. Uh, do do everything you can to try to keep this building as nice as possible, so that its its useful life uh, can be extended. Now, I have just a couple of questions, Sam. We have just two more minutes sure. before we have to close off. I have a couple of questions for you about uh, Dale Barton, your father-in-law. The the first question I have is, um, uh, what was it like in terms of going from file clerk to president and CEO of the company? And at what point did you and he have a conversation about your taking ownership of the company, and how did that play out? And then the final question, uh, what, what uh, Dale Barton has just died this week. I know this is a tender time for you. What are you going to be remembering about Dale Barton? Well, first of all, um, as you start from file clerk and work up to president and CEO of the company, you learn every aspect that you can. You need to know as much about everything that goes on there as anybody else. So from all the insurance things that take place to all the bonding things that take place, uh, you know, the territories that you cover throughout the country, outside the country, you need to know about all those things. You need to be, you know, fully and completely engaged. Um, you can't have absentee uh, uh, involvement and uh, it's important to, uh, uh, to do your very best and to surround yourself with very good people that make a difference so that you truly have a team effort to, to, to go forward. Um, as far as what I've, what I've learned from him and what I've taken away is that um, he, because he didn't really have any, anything and because he, he uh, had a thirst for knowledge, uh, he would read the dictionary. He had probably one of the biggest vocabularies of anybody I've ever met in my life. And at the end of his life, he was always coming up to somebody and saying, you are the apex, meaning you're the very top. And um, he, uh, he, he was a voracious reader. And I think that's the reason he, he enjoyed giving away thousands and thousands of books to others to help engender them a, a thirst for knowledge and, and of education. And he would always quote to Aristotle and say, uh, and let me just get the exact quote here so that I can uh, mention that. But uh, this is what Aristotle says. It makes no small difference whether we form habits of one kind or another from our very youth, it makes a very great difference, or rather all the difference. So whatever habits we're, we're uh, developing today uh, will carry forward, forward with us uh, in our future life. Uh, you cannot be one person during the week and another person on the weekend. You have to be the same person. It just doesn't work that way. And so you need to be... Uh, to look at Utah State, you need to be true blue. You need to be uh, consistent. You need to be, uh, you know, who you are. Um, you need to be proud of your name. You need to be able to go forward and wherever you are uh, to be able to, uh, to be proud of who you are and what you represent and stand for. That, that phrase from my father will, and, uh, and also from my father-in-law will forever be in my mind, my heart, and my, in my mind, and that is remember who you are and what you stand for, and that's the credo by which I've tried to live. Sam, we appreciate so much your coming today. Thank you for this wonderful offer.